Static design is cool and all, but it's 2025 and we can design in code and create things that was never even before possible with design tools to nail even the subtlest interactions to delight our users. And you don't even need to be an expert designer or developer to do this. You just need to learn how to design in code. So how can you use AI tools to produce more rich and interactive experiences like this instead of your typical AI slop like this? Here's my best tips. The first thing to know is you don't need to start from scratch. There are great resources online that can give you animated templates, effects, and layouts that you can use as a starting point and use AI to take what you like and adapt it to both your brand and your tech stack for you. For example, that cool ether effect, I got it from reactbits.dev. You can choose from a huge variety of effects on the site. And for any of them you like, you can just go to the code, grab the full source code from the code box here, copy it, then go to your AI tool of choice. I'm using builder.io. Say, add this effect as the background and paste in that code and let it go. The beauty of using large language models for this is twofold. One, regardless of the tech stack that the source code uses, LLMs are really good at adapting example code to the stack you're using. And second, they're good at adapting the visuals to better match your brand. So I could have instructed it to use colors that better match our color palette. But in this case, I'll do that as a subsequent step. So now the AI is porting the code over to match the stack and format we write code in. And now I've got this really cool effect, borrowed from React Bits and adapted to my tech. Now let's give it feedback to match my branding better. So I told it instead of blue and orange, please match the purple colors of our brand like you see on the buttons of this page. Like all things in AI, it's all about feedback and iteration. Don't expect perfection on the first shot. Give continuous feedback just like you would to a person. And there we go. Now we have this awesome purple ripple that matches our brand better. Now a really cool thing about using platforms like Builder.io is I can open up our existing site. We don't have to start from scratch like a lot of these tools. And we can even open up multiple branches to explore different ideas. I found this really cool planet effect from a code pen and I did the same technique. I copied the code, I had it come in, and we can make updates however we like too. For instance, I did a lot of playing around with particle effects through prompts to explore making it look like galaxies or star fields or fireworks. But I decided this is a bit too busy. I ended up really liking this liquid ether effect. And the beautiful thing is whatever you create, you can send a pull request for your team to review. They can leave comments for anything that they want the builder agent to address. Move this to a new file. The builder agent will get right on it and push up commits to address feedback. And when you're ready, you can just merge it. And you can see when you go to the live builder.io site that you can play around with it yourself. In my opinion, the best three resources for this are reactbits.dev, 21st.dev, as well as CodePen's top lists for each calendar year, where you can look at the top 100 code pens for any given year and grab inspiration from there. I'll link to all three of these in the blog post. The next critical tip I have to not create AI slop looking stuff like this is to use AI tools that actually connect to your real code bases and design systems. AI is good at reproducing patterns. So the more examples you give it and the more instructions you give it around your specific design systems, the more it'll design and build like you. You don't want to start with a blank canvas or a tool that always builds from scratch. You want to start with the components and UIs that you have. For example, this is builder.io editing builder.io, the actual live production repo. For instance, if I want to prototype something new within builder, I can just say whatever we want. Like add a new app wide tab that is a social feed of what your team is building in Builder. This was a cool feature that someone asked for to better collaborate on what people are building and to use the tool to generate lots of ideas that people can comment on. So we can just start exploring ideas by typing in our thoughts and seeing what we can come up with. Because it's in our repository, it's going to use our components, our icons, our design tokens, all of that by default. You can also use tools like Cursor or Cloud Code for this. But of course, those require a certain level of development skills. If you want people like designers or product managers in here, using a tool like Builder.io can let them use it in a simple, non-dev friendly interface. If you find you have a super bespoke design system that the AI is not really having an easy time understanding, especially if it comes from a separate NPM package, you can use something we call a design system index for that. It's a script we provide that you can run in your design system repository that gathers highly LLM optimized instructions about the components, props, and correct usages of the design system itself. It looks at the source code, examples, storybook, and documentation to make sure we feed all of that to the AI every time, because while humans don't always read the docs, we can make sure the AI does. And here we go. We have a first draft of a social feed concept. It's using our design system. The elements are interactive. I can even add my own comments. Let's check if it looks good in dark mode, and it does, so it's using our design tokens as well. 
And this leads me to my next tip, which is make sure you use tools that give you precision control when you need it. So here using builder.io, I can just go to design mode at any time and get this Figma-like precision editing mode. For example, I want a bit of a right margin here and I can change anything else I like as well. For example, alignment, etc., and then just apply those changes in. It's also really valuable to have a really tight Figma integration. So I can also grab pieces like these cards and I can just copy them here and using the builder plugin, paste them into Figma. I can make any edits here that I like, like maybe making this a bit more of a landscape image. And then I can always grab what I changed, export it again. Here in builder, I can select what I edited, paste the Figma design and say, apply my design updates. Having a really clean two-way connection from your AI code to Figma and Figma and back, especially one that knows your design system, uses that when updating code and can then send pull requests with the updates can be super duper handy. The last suggestion I have is to really rethink your team workflows. Look, I've got a brand new prototype of a new feature. The foundations of the UI are actually already built. They're right here in code and we can inspect them. They're using our design system and our design tokens. It's really common that our designers or PMs play with ideas here in Builder and then send a pull request thinking that the developers will need to take it over and change everything. And our devs look at it and say, the work is done. Let's just merge it. Whole features in Builder like project pinning, project duplication, little UI touches like this cool type head animation. These were done by our designers and product managers. We also do a lot of work in parallel. So with this basic scaffold of a feature, one of our developers can go and hook up in the back end functionality without having to worry about the front end details. The front end details are basically there. The basic functionality is here. We just need to stitch it together with the final logic. Sometimes AI can help there too. I can go prompt and tell it to actually pull these events and actually hook it up to a live collection in our database, or I can leave that for engineers. That's up to you. Tools like these could help us break out of these long, never ending, soul crushing waterfall processes. Designers can design in code and what they produce doesn't need to be handed off and rebuilt. It's ready. It may need a little bit of refactoring, which AI could do. It may need some functionality, which engineering can do, but you don't have to recreate all these things from scratch at each step. Product managers can make prototypes, write in code, that a designer can come in and make look nicer. We've seen interesting concurrent workflows. Product manager might make a basic prototype. In parallel, a designer will work off of front end and make the front end look and feel nicer, exploring all the different options for those delightful touches. And the developer concurrently is building the additional functionality in backend. We work the final result into one or multiple pull requests that go to production much faster. And we're seeing our engineers be more autonomous because engineers can unblock themselves. They don't need to wait on design for a popover or a moding. The AI knows how to use the design system and can unblock those day-to-day -day tasks that just don't need more steps in the process, which lets people get customer feedback faster, build better products faster. For more tips on how to use AI to build amazing products and user experiences and break out of the static design habits that you have today, you can read more as well as find all the links I mentioned here to all the different resources in my latest blog post on the builder.io blog. Now go make something awesome and send it to me so I can see it.